Hi, I'm Jessica Ramirez for the Finance News Network. With me now is CEO and Managing Director of Brainship Holdings, Lou Donato. Lou, welcome back. Hi. So Brainship's developing semiconductors that are used in a range of applications such as facial recognition. Can you tell us more about it? Certainly. It's a combination of uh, software and algorithms that run on a hardware accelerated piece of silicon. And so we develop algorithms that can do edge detection, facial recognition, that's for object detection as well as facial recognition. Sometimes it's easier to find a pattern, take a snapshot of someone's shirt or tie or cufflink, and that's a suspect that you want to find. We'll have a pattern that we will uh, follow through the, on a video. Uh, facial recognition is nothing more than a pattern for us, but we take that software and we accelerate it by running it in silicon. Now to your Brainship Studio platform, what does it provide developers and end users? Brainship Studio is a software package that can run on any standard server, Linux or Windows, uh, and, it, and it runs those algorithms and uh, the software solutions to do facial recognition or pattern recognition. Uh, the advantages to the user are that it's, uh, it's a bit like an off-the-shelf shrink wrap package. It's like buying Microsoft Office. Uh, it's got a good, slick user interface, easy to use. Uh, click on Learn, and you can learn the pattern or the face. Click on Find, and it will find it in any stream of video, whether it's live or stored footage. Uh, and then you get a report out of, this is the suspect we found in you know, 75 times in the last hour at these locations. Uh, so it's very, uh, it's a very easy tool for law enforcement and anti-terrorism authorities to use. So speaking about that, you've had some great responses. We're working with uh, the Department of Homeland Security in France, the French police force, an airport in Bordeaux, uh, engaged in trials with many others. Um, interesting, uh, another market, which when you realize that you can find objects or detect patterns, uh, we're in the casino business. Uh, in their surveillance systems, we can recognize a card or a chip. We count cards, determine who won and who lost, whether the deal was paid off properly or not, whether someone was cheating, uh, how long a player sat at the table, and whether they should get comped, you know, that uh, complimentary services for a free dinner or a free room. Uh, so we run from anti-terrorism to counting cards in casinos. And Lou, looking at your autonomous solution in more detail now, what's the demand like and what does it actually provide? It's important to recognize that autonomous learning uh, in the artificial intelligence arena is much different than what people call deep learning. Deep learning, you can think about Google, Microsoft, Intel, and others uh, taking large databases and very, very large sample sets in order to match an object with an identification or classifier. We learn autonomously. There is no programming. There's no mathematical computation. Uh, we put digital or synthetic synapse on a piece of silicon, and it works like your brain. Uh, it starts to learn autonomously. Uh, in some cases, we have a model that's been created, again, a face that we know that we're trying to find or a pattern that we know that is supervised autonomous learning. So you're comparing to a model and coming up with a result. Unsupervised autonomous learning is when we don't know what we're looking for. So you can imagine a drone flying over a battlefield. It sees sand and sand and sand, uh, but then we'll identify a pattern. We don't know what it is. We just see an object, and we find another object, it's different. We find a third object, it's different. We feed that back to command and control, and they then label it and say, that's a tank, that's a soldier, that's a missile. And now we have autonomously, in an unsupervised way, learned, labeled the data, and then we can carry on with the mission. So, Luke, now can you tell us about the work that you're doing specifically at some airports in France, casinos, and also border security? Bordeaux Airport is very concerned about perimeter intrusion. So they have cameras going down the fence line uh, on either side of you know, all four corners of the airport, uh, and they have cameras on either side of planes that are parked at, uh, at jetways. And their concern is that someone hops the fence. Uh, again, this, this could be crime or terrorism. Uh, someone hops the fence and approaches an airplane, uh, or at the base of the airplane in the uh, in the gate that someone approaches the airplane from uh, from the bottom or from underneath. Uh, we're looking through those cameras, and we can identify a rabbit versus a person versus a dog. Uh, they had a system installed; it was failing quite often. They were getting a thousand false alerts a month, so they'd have to send a patrol out and determine that it was a rabbit, and not a person. Uh, they installed our system. We reduced the false alerts by 96%, um, and they're very happy with that solution. Now we'll take that to other airports and other similar applications. Great. Changing pace now to your financial results, what were some of the highlights from FY17? FY17 was a productive year for us. Uh, you know, we did, we did get, launch the software package in early 18 on the back of all the effort that went in 17. Uh, there was a lot of development that went on in the hardware. Uh, we built out our team. We hired a vice president of marketing and business development. Uh, we've hired generally uh, engineering staff, uh, both in North America and in Europe. 
Uh, and we raised two rounds of funding. We raised a round of funding in uh, May of 17, as well as October of 17. So what's the focus long term, Lou? Focus long term is to take um, more than the vision applications that we've talked about. A vision, we look at repeating patterns, and that's how we identify objects, uh, whether it be a face uh, or a pattern. Uh, our ability to recognize patterns goes well beyond vision. We can recognize patterns in data streams. Uh, so you can think about cybersecurity. Uh, when someone launches a denial of service attack, they're sending repeated uh, requests for service, uh, which then shut down the infrastructure. We can identify those patterns very quickly and help operators avoid those denial of service attacks. Uh, similarly, in financial technology or fintech, we can look at high frequency trading and determine what patterns are being used and whether people are trying to, let's say, game the system, so to speak. Uh, so financial technology, uh, the cybersecurity arena, and I think one of the most exciting things about the development of the standalone artificial intelligence processor, which we're now developing, uh, is in the autonomous vehicle, or what we call ADAS, uh, Advanced Driver Assisted Systems. Uh, our ability to recognize patterns, streamline data so that we can be transmitted from cameras uh, back to the central processor uh, in an automobile, and it's a perfect fit for our uh, coming processor. And last question now, Lou, when can we see some more developments on that? That'll be in uh, late 18, probably. Uh, we're developing the core processor now. Um, we're engaged with one large European automot automobile manufacturer uh, who's using BrainChip Studio and actually is taking delivery of the first BrainChip Accelerator card. Uh, that's a preamble to using our AI processor. Wonderful. It all sounds great. Well, Lou Donato, thank you so much for the update. Thank you very much.